speaking of our previous episodes, we kind of um, <coughs> left. Okay, yeah, sorry. <coughs> Let's get that out of the way. Let's get our. Cops. I didn't do my vocal warm ups in the car. Well, well, like well, I usually well, do. Well. <coughs> Actually, I did. Taylor Swift was on. This morning, I oh. spent a good five ten minutes just, you know, just uh, not 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 exercising, but just mm-hmm. trying to clear clear the pathways there a little bit. <coughs> But uh, we'll take two. Um, so welcome back, everybody. This is the next phase, the next segment of the Dennis Files. And we kind of left off on this, these ideas about the Writing Center. We talked more about Dr. Dennis's educational history, personal history, leading into um, the founding of the Writing Center. And... I think this next segment should, should, if at all possible, have a more of a dissection of mm. the process. <laughs> yeah, cringe. Uh, more of a, a, a focus on the process um, and the decision making when determining. Well, I think a writing center should be created for Our Lady of the Lake University, and any kind of logistical issues that you might have encountered and perceived obstacles or obstacles that popped up out of nowhere, perhaps. Um, because if anything, maybe this can be an educational primer for um, not just students, but maybe possibly other administrators who may want to undertake such a possibly Herculean task of establishing a writing center on a, on a college campus. So, um, Sabrina, did you have any other kind of insight that you wanted to throw in there for us to kind of start off the conversation or anything? Very pensive <coughs> right now. I'm... I'm curious if there was any opposition to it. Yes, I think that's a good place. Oh, that's, that's a good question. Yeah, that's a good place mm-hmm. to start. Somebody's saying, why would you need that? It's not mm-hmm. necessary to have. And we did talk, it, that's a good place because we did talk previously about um, this idea of remediation, uh, the negative stigma perhaps oh, sure, associated. Sure. So I could definitely see what would some of the, you know, why would you do that? Mm-hmm. What, what is mm-hmm. the purpose of that? So Dr. Dennis, if you would, just kind of walk us through that. Okay. I like that question about opposition. Um, and I'm, I'm actually, I'm searching the landscape of my memory, and I really don't recall any. Really? Um, probably the reason it took so long mm-hmm. was, and I say so long, you know, I'm thinking back to, okay, I started with the university in 1970, and then right. it was... Mm-hmm. 2009 when we actually started a thing called a writing center. Um, It took that long partly because of of questions of funding. That's always the big thing, you know. Where's the money coming from? Exactly. And um, partly, I think, because of um, issues of, of, you know, organization, you know, who's going to Mm-hmm. run it, where's it going to be, who does it serve, and, and so on and so on. Um, but I, I, I don't think anybody really said why. Yeah. You know, what, what's the deal? No violent opposition, so to speak. And not, e- not even non-violent yeah. opposition. <laughs> yeah. Which is always yeah. good. Yeah. I, I think um, what comes to mind is more sort of misunderstandings. Yes. Um, and and those not even uh, oppositional misunderstandings. Just I'm, you know, I'm thinking about um, a a faculty member who said, "Oh, I wish the writing center served graduate students," mm, and okay. that took me by surprise uh, wow. because it was a full time faculty member. And yeah. I you know I thought we were mm-hmm. advertising sufficiently. Um, so n- no, I. I think it was a pretty much welcomed idea. The the question of of that we were talking about at the end of last time about you know what's what's the big purpose is mm-hmm. this um, is this a, a center for you know for for people who have to be pushed and dragged right. in um, is it just for for the, you know the the writing 
deprived people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, so trying to expand that to yeah, no, this is this is a writing community ideally. Right, and I think the like you said, the community mm -hmm. is probably as good as it is to to want to establish that. I don't know if a lot of people understand what it means to be part of community sometimes yeah. in an academic setting. So yeah. Well, and I, I think it's hard trying to meet a deadline or whose professor has told them, you got to clean up your APA and that kind of, um, you know, fix it mentality. Right. But uh, going back to your question of motivation and, and why did we get things started, I, I think there was a mixture of, of things going on there. Um, part of it was the, the belief, the, the philosophy, if you will, of um, a number of people. You know, I, I associate the, the impetus primarily with, with Dr. Helen Strubert, who was the Vice President for Academics <clears throat> for a few years, um, and um, despite, where am I going with that, let me just yeah. come back, um, you know, I think one, one of the good things that she, she did was to, to push to unify academic support. Right. And um, you know how she went about that was not always appreciated, um, for sure. But but the the goal there to to provide strong academic support right. for for people who needed it um, was a, a very strong consideration mm -hmm. of, of hers. And, and also of, of Dr. David Estes, who was the executive vice president for a while. Um, and I'm, you know, I have no idea what conversations they had with what other people and, right, right. and so on. Um, but there, there was, an, you know, I think that, you know, we, we were talking earlier about, okay, are we remediators right. or are we expanders of, of writing capacity and, and imagination and so on? And, and I hope that we're both. Um, I, you know, I think that notion of academic support, though, often comes and in, 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 in the case of our administration probably came out of the, the feeling of we've got to improve the numbers of people you know who stay beyond their first semester of their freshman year right. who do more than than survive who um, you know come to college often not knowing what to expect yeah. and not ready for the challenges so so working on the writing center was was part of that that impetus you know help people get through those challenges help help the university mm -hmm. meet um, sure be, meet those needs um, meet its own image problems I mean you know we were still dealing with I don't know if we were dealing with incline declining enrollment still at that point I, I think we were but you know if, if you lose 30% of your freshmen. Yeah, that's a you, big chunk. Sure, it's a really big sure, chunk. Sure, yeah. yeah. So, all of that. Um, and I'm trying to think, you know, again, I wasn't privy to all the conversations Most that, that yeah. came in there. I mentioned Andrew Freeman, who was the director of tutoring services and services to students with disabilities at the time. And he was very capable, very much of a, of a go-getter. And I think when he came on board, um, he was willing to take on the challenge of, of establishing a, a writing lab 
as I mentioned last time, mm -hmm. um, sort of as, as you know, one component within the 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 tutoring center for starters. Yes, yes. You know, and I'm drawing little circles within circles. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. So yeah, I need I need a white but whiteboard <laughs> next time we do this. Anyway. Um, but the complexities, I don't mean to interrupt, but the complexities yeah. you're talking about, and, and I think, you know, the gesturing of the circles, <laughs> inside of circles, mm -hmm. it is um, not only, I think, just in its construct, a complex layering, but like you said, you're navigating the administrative aspects sure. of it, too, because now it seems like the, part of the mission would have an element of, like, student retention, uh, sure. Addressing, like you said, addressing the needs of potential, like kind of like forecasting what would the needs of the future, you know, the future incoming mm -hmm. students. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, the the um, using the rings kind of I think is very appropriate because um, I think some people have the the another kind of misconception is oh it's just a place where people sit down and just read or fix or do whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But like you said, I think now you're going into some really interesting territory of talking about the complexities of a writing mm -hmm. center. And not just that, but um, its place within the community. Like you said earlier, the, the idea of a community, the learning community. And if there's already a tutoring center, what other aspects mm -hmm. can, can be married to make that part of student success? You know? um, right. So I apologize if I interrupted no, you, no, but just kind of want to build fine. off of that yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, my my metaphors have been for a long time that we are both in an emergency room, mm -hmm. you know, doing yes. the fix it stuff, and we are a a fitness center, you right. know, trying to do preventative work, but also trying to to build up, um, you know, mental muscle and, yeah. and you know we, mass. we're we're the mass. intellectual juice bar. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> and everything else. So, yeah, yeah, so, you know, building up um, an, an atmosphere of, of delight in good writing mm -hmm. is, is part of what I hope we're doing. Mm 